Okay, so um, we're going to take a look at Alex Belfield. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Alex is a gobshite. Uh, he's been putting stuff out on YouTube for a few years um, after resigning from uh, the BBC or not having his contract renewed, potentially. I don't know. Can't imagine why. Um, let's just dive into this video, which is uh, he, he named You Can't Argue with private parts and let's just have a look at what he's saying and potentially why he's saying Whilst I've been away I've been thinking a lot about the whippersnappers you know the the lefty uh, snowflake uh, woke flake dopery uh, do-gooding left-footing namby-pamby pinko liberals I've been trying to work out why these people are as thick as two short planks what is it about the whippersnappers that they don't understand the difference between their opinion and reality the difference between their chosen thought and science and biology and why do they not get that men can be men and women can be women. I just got off a British Airways flight. Hello, everyone, was what the captain said. He did not say, hello, ladies and gentlemen, because they've fallen for this narrative that you no longer are male or female. You're no longer boys and girls, like they won't say at Disney anymore. Hello, boys and girls has gone, as it has in a lot of the pantomimes. They have been exorcised from the narrative because it might offend a tiny little Mishkite population who are going to be offended on behalf of people who really are trans, transforming, or just a little ambivalacious. We've got a clip next from Dr. Phil with a doctor who makes it absolutely clear why a woman is a woman and a man is a man. You wouldn't think in 2022 this is a conversation we've got to have, but ask the Olympians. I think it is. I think it is. Let's just uh, let's um, pause him there. So, uh, what's he said so far? Um, he's pointed out that he's very right wing because anyone that is namby pamby pinko liberal is deserving of name calling. But uh, this is standard for Alex. He's he's somewhat like a, a Trump figure, a, 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 a yeah poundland Trump, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> and this is where he goes. It, Alex loves to uh, just call names, make up little words for people. Uh, it's sad. It, it, it's not impressive. Um, but here's the thing, Alex. You've taken offence to the BA captain saying, hello, everyone. You understand that you sit within the subset of everyone. The subset of everyone includes men and women and boys and girls and people who are non-binary or identify differently. What's the problem? You've been greeted by the captain of the BA plane and he's included someone else? Yeah. About the Namby Pamby Pinko liberals, the Guardian reading, champagne sipping, oyster eating, uh, negamen shushy types that uh, just won't be told. They, they won't listen to the facts and don't understand that it's okay to be a man and it's okay to be a woman and it's okay to be a boy and a girl. And that's not offensive, nor is it controversial. Controversial. No, nope, uh, absolute agreement. It is fine to be a man, fine to be a woman, fine to be a boy, fine to be a girl, fine to be somebody who identifies as non-binary, fine to be transgender, fine to be gay, fine to be lesbian, fine to be bisexual. All of these fine things are fine. They are not controversial in any worldview that, that's worth listening to. Um, who says they are, Alex? Dr. Phil, who had a doctor on to explain to some very strange looking um, well, uh, person, I can't say man or woman because it seems like it's somewhere Arthur or Martha. It's neither in uh, Bombay or Morecambe Bay. It's, it's neither in Bangkok nor Phuket. You can't really tell whether it's Arthur or Martha. Watch this. It's a question I would like to throw out to you know, other members of the panel, actually, because just like the four-year-old can't answer what is a girl. Well, this is one of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? Well, can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Because but, it's not for me to say. I, womanhood looks different for everybody. What do, you, what do you define a woman as? An adult human female. And what does a female mean? 
Uh, well, that's how do, you, how do you define a fetus? Someone with, with female reproductive organs. Okay. Someone who's, you know, here's the thing. When you're, when you're a female, it goes right down to your bones, your DNA. So that's why if someone dies, okay. we could dig up their bones 100 years from now. We have no idea what they believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were okay. because it's, in, it's down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. Interesting. So I'm trying to- So basically, the young people don't understand that there is a real science- Believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were okay. because it's, in, it's down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. So I'm okay, so um, there we go. Without doubt, uh, that doctor has ju the doctor. Oh yes, M Matt Walsh. Alex, Matt Walsh is not a doctor. Matt Walsh is a conservative right-wing commenta commentator. That, that, that's what he is. That is his raison d'etre is to foment hate and uh, speak against transgender because his magic sky daddy has told him that this is wrong. So number one, Alex, if you're going to put this stuff out, at least go and check whether that's a doctor and check what his credentials are. Dr. Phil was a psychologist. Dr. Phil hasn't renewed his license to practice since 2006. He is a, a TV personality, effectively. Uh, a TV personality who's uh, quite happy to promote uh, diabetes drugs. Again, an area not of his specialty, but because he's well known and the TV sees him as a doctor. Yeah, well, he makes money out of it, doesn't he, Alex? A bit like yourself with your drivel. So basically, the young people don't understand that there is a real science to whether or not you're male or female, and that that is to do with what you're born with and the private parts to which you were given by God. I did. What's in your pants? And of course, Alex has done the research to make sure that this is real science. Anyway, uh, the reality is these children need a wake-up call, and I think it comes down to teachers. I blame these uni uh, graduated whippersnapper children that have become uh, educated by the system that you can be what you want to be, and nobody can tell you to shut the fuck up. I was having a conversation yesterday, I'm going off on one now, about um, the standard of air stewardesses. And how there's quite a lot of big boned ones uh, these days and, and they're quite plain. They don't seem to worry about hair and makeup, which in the old days used to be part of the glamour of flying. OK, the glamour of flying disappeared when they started letting people like Alex Belfield on board aeroplanes. Glamour disappeared altogether then, didn't it, Alex? Um, what has anyone's weight or looks got to do with it? You shallow, vapid little man. Have you looked in a mirror? Looks don't matter. A lady's weight shouldn't matter and you shouldn't comment on it. You should keep your fat stinking gob shut. Really, Alex. And why is it a bad thing for people to be university educated? What's the issue with learning? I mean, clearly you have one, but... Hmm do that anymore especially in the american airlines they're even worse i mean trust me they, they they wipe out two rows when they come down with each sort of ass cheek flapping in the breeze as they come down the aisle tea coffee fisted chicken that sort of thing you can't say to them now you need to lose a few pounds you can't say get a fucking comb out and do your hair you can't say put a bit of lippy on or mascara because it would be offensive and it would land you in a court of law and a discrimination discrimination for looking the fucking part. This is how silly it's got. And then we saw the story while I was away again about the Olympics. And this is not fair that people who were born as men are now competing as women, not giving women who were born as women a chance. This is ludicrous. When will it stop? It's so exhausting, distracting and fucking ridiculous. These kids really don't understand what these doctors are saying. They don't understand the notion that actually the science is right. The, the biology, the human body is right and they're wrong. They can't see it because they're too busy watching those fucking mind-bending drag shows on the BBC. Oh, put on a frock and tell a crap gag. Put on a dopey wig and do bad makeup. Yeah, you, you, you need to see a psychologist. Never mind go on a fucking drag show, least of all at the BBC. Do you know, by the way, they filmed that in the same studios where they did Jim or Fix It. I'll leave it with you. Okay, so.
also uh, another classic Alex rant. They film it in the same studio as Jim will fix it. But Alex, you 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 interviewed Jim Savile. What does that make you? It doesn't. You interviewed it. You were in the same place at the same time. But you know, you sat down and interviewed the hideous, vile paedophile, uh, and you do regular imitations of him on your on your program. Stopped for a little while, but they'll creep back. I'm quite sure, Alex. Uh, next. What's it to do with you? You want to learn about science, Alex. Then that's what you should do. You say that the science supports it. So presumably if the science supports it, you're going to get behind Not too long ago, I made a TikTok video about what it means to be trans or intersex. And ever since that day, I've been tagged in about a thousand different videos of people making the same stupid arguments that we've all heard a million times. Things like, oh, you're either XX or XY, or boys act like this and girls look like that, or you can't change your gender any more than you can change your age or your species. And I figured that I could make a bunch of different TikTok videos, each one trying to cram into 60 seconds just how asinine these arguments actually are, or I could just make one solid YouTube video that explains in layman's terms how this whole two-gender system works, or doesn't work from a biological perspective. Before we begin... Yes. Uh, well, there we go. Um, this looks like it might be somebody that knows what they're talking about, Alex. You know, science. Also, the whole idea that you're just born male or female and that we should just go with what's on your birth certificate is deeply flawed, to say the least. There are several species that are completely hermaphroditic, making both sperm and eggs. There are several species that are sequentially hermaphroditic. They start out as either male or female, and then later on in life they switch. There are plenty of species that can be one sex their entire lives, and then when it comes time to breed, if they can't find the opposite sex around, they just switch to the opposite sex to help everybody else out. There are even some animals that we call bilateral gonandromorphs that are literally male on one half of their body and female on the other half. You can even have that whole setup just in your gonads. Ovotestes are when you have ovarian tissue on one side and testicular tissue on the other side of the same organ. That happens sometimes in humans and other animals, and there are even some species where that's the normal ground state of all females. Well, Alex, I mean... That must be mind-blowing for you. Real, real science explaining, you know, sex. So gonadal differences aren't enough to actually differentiate between the two sexes. But I know what you're thinking, right? You're thinking, hey, just look at the chromosomes. After all, you're either XX or XY, right? Not exactly. The concept of how sex is determined in an organism is usually broken down like this. You have your chromosomes, those code for what kind of gonads you get, either ovaries or testes, and then those produce germ cells and hormones, and that's how we tell whether you're a boy or a girl. And if you go to any high school level biology class, that's probably the explanation that you're going to get. Problem is, that's wildly inaccurate, and it leaves a lot of stuff out. So, um, the thing you need to look at here, Alex, is that uh, he, he mentioned high school. That's the school you go to after you stop using the crayons. For example, the human Y chromosome contains instructions for a special kind of ribosome, which is the part of the cell that builds proteins. So protein synthesis is just very slightly different in me than it is for any female, and it has been since well before I had any hint of a gender. Perhaps you have heard that we are all females by default, and that it's the Y chromosome that makes me into a boy. That ain't true either. It is true to say that one particular gene on the Y chromosome, what we call SRY, plays a pretty important role in the development of testes and therefore, by extension, male behavior. So, for example, when the SRY gene was spliced into XX female mice, about 30% of them developed male testes, male genitalia, and even male behaviors. Similarly, when the SRY gene was cut out of XY male mice, many of them went on to develop ovaries, to develop feminine behaviors, and even to be able to get pregnant and have litters. Again, those are XY male mice getting pregnant and giving birth. But don't let any of this fool you into thinking that, like, the SRY gene is some magical on-off switch masculinity. The truth is way weirder and way cooler than that. For example, there was one cool study done back in the 1980s that showed that, like, female wallabies with XX chromosomes that didn't have any egg cells at birth actually developed testes and went on to be more or less males, even without the SRY gene. And you know why? It's because everyone has the genes for both testes and o- 
everyone has the genes for testes and ovaries, Alex? Ovaries. What kind of gonads you get, whether it's one or the other or neither or both, comes down to an incredibly complex set of genetic interactions on several different chromosomes, a few of which aren't even your sex chromosomes. For example, the gene that builds testes is called SOX9, and it's on chromosome number 17, which everyone watching this has. If you have ovaries right now, that's because on your X chromosome you have another gene called NR0B1, which makes a protein called DAX1 that stops SOX9 from giving you testes. But I have an X chromosome too, right? So like, what's going on there? The SRY gene that we've been talking about works by producing a protein that binds to NR0B1 and stops it from making DAX1 so that SOX9 can give me testes. That's why I have testicles. It's because a gene made a protein that stopped another gene from making a different protein that would have otherwise stopped a different gene from giving me the testicles that I have. Uh, you can see where this is going, can't you, Alex? Uh, I mean, genes, proteins, all of these intricate parts of the body working together to make you in a certain way? If you're paying attention, you might be starting to notice a few things here. This means that you could have a totally perfectly functional Y chromosome, but you have a problem with your SOX9 gene, and so you still end up with ovaries. Or, this could mean that you have no Y chromosome at all, but you have a faulty NR0B1 gene, and so you still end up with testicles. So you still end up with testicles, Alex. Hope for you yet. Let me give you just a grossly oversimplified explanation of how this works. You see, the cholesterol in your body is converted into progesterone, and then that is what becomes testosterone, and that is what gives you what my anatomy professors would call male internal plumbing. Some testosterone is converted into dihydrous testosterone, and that's what gives you male external genitalia. Some other testosterone is then converted into estrogen and estradiol, and that's where you get female secondary sex characteristics and get this, male brain anatomy. That's right, female embryos have to produce special proteins to bind estrogen to stop it from getting to their brains, otherwise they would develop mentally like a boy. We'll talk more about that stuff later. No, Alex, let's talk about it now. Females who can develop mentally as males, males who can develop mentally as females, do you understand yet where you are wrong? Uh, and, uh, in fairness, looking at the comments on your videos, a lot of your followers are wrong. You have a second grade at best education on biology. You weren't paying attention in the science class. But you do have the ability to get on the tippy-tappy, as you say, and find out about these things. You just don't want to. And you have to ask yourself why you don't want to. Does it make your brain hurt? Is it painful? Well, no pain, no gain. Sequential. This may shatter someone's whole worldview, but it needs to be said. In fact, if you take nothing else away from this video, I hope you understand this one point. An X or a Y chromosome is neither necessary nor is it sufficient for determining your sexual identity. There is no standard template for male versus female development in biology. And unless you have had your DNA sequenced and analyzed by a developmental biologist, you have no idea what's going on with you in this respect. As it stands, there are more than enough variations on the sex chromosomes alone to make a male that is feminine enough or a female that is masculine enough to pass as the opposite gender in both social circles and even to themselves. Okay, so... Uh, uh, could you say it any more plainly? Um, I think that this guy has demonstrated that you are wrong. That what you have just said is inaccurate. Worst case scenario, you're lying. Uh, best case scenario, you're ignorant. Uh, and there's a problem there because you're putting that out to your somewhere near 300,000 followers. You will get hundreds of thousands, if not in excess of a million uh, hits on that video. And people are going to listen to you. People are going to listen to you lie. You're misinformed, Alex. It's not good enough. Try harder. Try being a decent human being. Okay, so um, that was my first TubeCast. Uh, yes, it's very clunky. Um, 
in my own defense, I'm trying to learn how to uh, use the software to uh, edit things at the same time as editing things. Um, presentation could be better. Yes, I made some mistakes. You'll notice the bit where I put a caption on. Um, and no, I'm not re-recording it uh, because it's taken a bloody long time. Uh, the idea of this um, tube cast it was to respond to things quickly. Um, I have plans for something slightly different, which will be a bit more in-depth and a bit more um, sort of focused on critical thinking and uh, logic, etc. But um, I did think about re-recording things, and, and I will be re-recording them forever if I don't just put something out. So, hence, I am putting something out. What I'd love you to do is uh, hit a like, hit a dislike, um, put some comments down below in the, uh, in the comments section. I don't care, positive, negative, say something. I will try and respond to those comments if I possibly can, um, because uh, why wouldn't I? Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one, which I, I plan to do over the next day and, uh, and get out by, by Monday at the latest. Thanks, guys. Have a good time.